So guys how are you all friends what if Naruto was husband of Conan, started a new life in Konoha movie. All that was surrounding her was darkness, an empty void enveloped her senses and she couldn't really feel where she was, her memory was a little fuzzy and jumbled, her awareness was null, even in the blackness, she could feel herself breathing, so it felt like she wasn't dead at least, maybe she was? She tried to wiggle her fingers and felt them moving within her power, this was surprising to her, she moved her hand and lifted her arm and felt air slowly push past her hand from the force, the wind was somewhat cool against her fingers, it wasn't until she realized that she was laying down, that her memories slowly reached the surface. She remembered how she was supposed to infiltrate the leaf, yes, that's right, I infiltrated the leaf, there was a breakout of a fight, I fell back to Nagato's other paths and, everything's blank after that, her memory failed her and she couldn't for the life of her remember anything afterwards, even when she would try harder to think, nothing would come up, after giving up momentarily, she attempted to open her eyes. Even without opening her eyes, she could smell the sterile atmosphere. A smell of gauze and fluids filled the air and it was unmistakable. Opening her eyes surprisingly left her eyesight still black. She was nervous but only as quick as it came as she felt a cool and wet rag left upon her eyes. She lifted the rag from off her face and tried to open her eyes again. She squinted heavily as she tried to focus her vision. The room cleared and she could see that she was in a hospital room of some sort, immediately, a sharp pain rang through her skull. Her palm rushed to her head as she moaned in frustration, she couldn't staunch the intense agony the shot through her, but after a few moments, the feeling subsided, leaving her somewhat drained, she noticed the bandages that were wrapped around her head and in one particular spot on her forehead that was sore. She sat herself up and looked at her surroundings, she was indeed in a hospital room. Her gown hung off of one of her shoulders and she could see how she had an IV hooked up to her arm. She slowly pulled it out as she gained a better look at her environment, she had a window to her left that was currently closed, she couldn't see outside, frustrated, she only assumed that she was in Konoha, her main reasoning being that she had never seen this type of architecture in a megacure, she also saw light peeking between the blinds and AIM didn't have such a bright sky as what light was shining through the room at that moment. She stayed in her bed as she contemplated thoughtfully, she guessed that she was in Konoha and made other assumptions that she was being guarded in case she tried to leave early, she couldn't sense anyone around her, but she could be fooled, it was possible that the ninja watching over her were far more advanced than she could sense in her current state. Her thoughts were halted as the room door clicked open and a woman that looked in her twenties walked in with a clipboard, it was someone that she had been filled in with before the invasion. Conan's brows lowered in disinterest as she put on her facade, Sakura walked over with a smile on her face as she looked at the patient on the bed, ah, Conan, you're awake. This is good news, to be honest, we were worried about you. Conan looked at the beaming woman walking towards her strangely, worried about me? You must be kidding she couldn't help but think that Sakura was playing some type of game with her, so she didn't acknowledge her words. Sakura came to Conan's bed and laid her palms upon her patient's head. Conan offered no resistance but looked at her nurse with clear displeasure written upon her face. She knew after they were done with their little mind game that softens her up, that she would be more willing to cooperate, but she knew better, she didn't want to cooperate with the enemy, she would rather die than give away any information, this was for the betterment of mankind and if Nagato truly believed this, then he would do something about it and hopefully save her in her current predicament. You know, you don't have to be so tense, Sakura replied with a slight mirth echoing from her words, it's been almost five years now, I would assume our relationship would have gotten better during this time, I thought we were doing well. Conan only narrowed her eyes while watching the younger woman work her hands over the bump, where was Sakura trying to go with this? Five years? This was a really silly way of trying to get a person to talk. After a few more moments, Sakura's hands left Conan's head and she examined everywhere else on her body for just a minor checkup on the woman on the bed, she felt Conan's eyes constantly glaring daggers upon her and she couldn't help but feel a little worried about her safety, she quickly finished to try and change the subject, she knew that there was one thing that would make her feel better and at least keep the attention off of her. Sakura smiled as spoke up, well, your body seems normal, that bump on your head should go down within a week, other than that, I think you are doing well enough to be discharged today. Sakura then wrote some things down on her clipboard as she walked to the door, her smile opened genuinely as she continued, you have a visitor, so ill let her in, she really misses you, you know? You've been in here for a few days and I am sure you'd like to see a familiar face, unfortunately, Naruto is busy so he can't make it at the moment, you know how he is. Conan was impressed at this act that was played in front of her, but she couldn't help but feel curious of this visitor, there weren't really any women that she knew and that made her question whether or not Sakura was being genuine or clever in her wording. Why would she even bring up Naruto? All Conan knew of Naruto was that he was a Jinchuriki that needed to be captured, there was really nothing else of use there. As Sakura opened the door, she motioned for someone to come to her. After some pitter patter, 
There was a smaller girl that looked into the entrance, she had blue hair that reached her shoulders with a pendant by her right ear. Her eyes were unusually blue and she had two whisker marks on each side of her face. Her skin was a warm color and she wore a long sleeve orange pastel shirt with a pair of faded purple pants, she wore paste colored little slipper shoes that made a clacking noise with every step. The look on the girl's face was joyful as she ran up to the bed, Mama, you're awake. The girl ran up to the woman and tried to wrap her arms around the Conan's neck in a hug, but she was immediately rejected as the woman pushed her off of her, leaving the girl to fall to the floor. Conan was mortified, this girl called her, her mother, she looked at the girl and after contemplating, her eyes narrowed once more, you should be ashamed of yourself, she said while looking at Sakura, it's a disgrace to use a child in your corrupt endeavors, I never thought Konoha would do something this low. Mama, what are you talking about? The girl asked confused while rubbing her butt in an attempt to stop the stinging from when she fell, I am your daughter, Hanan, don't you remember? Conan gazed over to the woman who seemed to have a look of concern that fell over her features, then her eyes strayed to the little girl and saw a similar reaction on her face, something didn't feel right. Okay, Hanan, I think you should leave now, I have some important things that I need to discuss with your mother, Sakura said in an authoritative tone, the little girl pouted, but trudged her feet to the entrance again before looking at her mother one more time before leaving. Once the door closed, Sakura took on a serious appearance, the happiness seemed to fade away as she stared at Conan, I have a few questions and I want you to be honest as much as possible. After not receiving an answer from the woman in bed, she decided to ask anyway, what is your name? After being silent for a moment, but finding the question harmless, she answered, Conan. What is your affiliation? Another small pause before she answered, I am in the organization known as the Akatsuki. Sakura's eyes widened before they lowered in sadness, and, finally, what is the last thing that you remember before waking up? Conan thought momentarily, before she answered trying to keep certain secrets to herself, I, I remember sitting just outside of Konoha waiting to attack your city. Sakura shook her head as she wrote down some more things on her clipboard, her face was etched with remorse as she looked at the woman in front of her, it was going to be hard, but she had to tell her some way or another, um, Conan, I know this is going to sound strange to you and you probably won't believe it, but, you have amnesia. Sakura waited as she let the other woman take it in, after seeing Conan's face change from confusion to uncertainty, she continued, you see, the invasion ended almost six years ago, the war is over, the Akatsuki were ended after the members were defeated, I know it sounds strange and I am not trying to freak you out or anything, but you do need to know what's going on today. Conan sat there confused, has it really been six years? The Akatsuki were defeated? I don't understand? I can see that this could affect you pretty harshly, but things unfortunately for you, get more interesting, Sakura stated, grabbing the attention of the other woman, well, I don't know how to say this without you doubting me, but, well, Sakura blushed lightly while looking somewhere else other than the other person in the room, you, started a new life, here, your husband is the seventh Hokage. What? Conan retorted rather harshly, do you expect me to believe that nonsense, what are you trying to pull? Sakura sighed as she looked at the woman again, I knew you would say that, tell me, is it normal for your hair to grow so fast in a few days? Conan didn't understand what she was talking about until she looked downwards and noticed her locks were reaching her chest. She felt her hair all the way around and noticed her entire hairstyle was completely changed, she had longer hair that fell past her shoulder blades, she pulled on it a little and felt that it was indeed her hair, her mind raced shortly before she tried to calm herself, freaking out wasn't going to get her anywhere, plus, there were things in this story that didn't make sense, she snorted, nice trick, Sakura, but you're going to have to try harder to fool me. Sakura stared a few moments before she walked around Conan's bed, the woman eyed Sakura suspiciously as she went over to the window. If something like that won't change your mind, then maybe this will? Sakura pulled the blinds open, letting an intense light of the afternoon sky fill the room. After Conan squinted to readjust her vision, she looked out of the window and witnessed something she would have never expected. Her eyes widened as she shot up from her bed and reached the window. Outside, was Konoha in its fully built glory, nothing was destroyed and the city seemed bigger than she remembered. It wasn't until she looked over to the cliffside that she noticed something entirely different. It shook her to her very core, lined on the cliff surface were all of the Hokage that ruled over the leaf village, she saw the original five that were there before, but she noticed a couple of new faces that graced the mountain, Hitaki Kakashi's face was right after the fifth Hokage's face and what came next left her speechless, the next face that lined after Kakashi's was none other than Naruto Uzumaki's, the Jinchuriki they were trying to capture, became the seventh Hokage. Conan's demeanor started to crumble as she gazed upon the monument in awe, she couldn't say much of anything at that moment, her eyes couldn't leave the last face on the cliffside, after she licked her lips subconsciously, she had to ask, when you said, that I was married to the seventh Hokage, did you really mean? 
Sakura blushed again as she looked away from Conan but looked at the monument, that you were married to Naruto? Yes, I did, your missus, Uzumaki Senju. Conan took a step back as she continued staring at the monument, then back at Sakura, what type of reality was she in? None of this made any sense, since when would she fall in love with someone so much younger than her? How could she live in the leaf village and betray Nagato in this way? It wasn't until then that a thought occurred to her. Conan's eyes closed in finality as she blew a sigh, this is a genjutsu, I should have figured that out from the beginning. Sakura frowned further as she saw Conan attempt to break the genjutsu but to no avail, after a few times of trying but failing at breaking her genjutsu, Sakura spoke up, I am sorry Conan, but, this isn't a genjutsu and it's not a lie, everything that you see here is the truth. Naruto is the Hokage and yes, you were married to him, as hard as that is to believe. After Conan attempted a few more times, her face grew more concerned and nervous, this was either a very powerful genjutsu that she couldn't break out of, or she was really in the future with a new life that she never knew she had. She stared at her hands in shock as she realized that there was some truth to Sakura's words after all, she shot her sight over to Sakura before she started turning into paper, there was no way that this was true. You, you're lying to me. Get me out of this genjutsu now. Conan yelled intensely as she fluttered her papers around her body, she wasn't going to let someone take advantage of her in this way, she had to get out of it and find Nagato again, hopefully, he would have more answers to her being captured. Sakura was scared stiff as she tried to push her nervousness down, she never expected Conan to retaliate this far and she wasn't properly prepared to handle her at this time, Conan's paper slowly went up Sakura's body as she tried her best to make Conan relax, stop, please listen to me, you really do have amnesia, calm down. Being calm was the last thing on her mind as her papers drew nearer to Sakura's head. Asterisk FWIP Asterisk Conan's eyes widened as she saw a yellow blur appear before her and Sakura, knocking Sakura out of the way and pushing Conan to the bed. Ladies, I thought we've already been over this? Fighting never solves anything, you know? A voice that sounded familiar but unfamiliar at the same time shouted as Conan looked up to see who interrupted them. There stood a taller man with blonde spiky hair and a black and orange windbreaker, she could see him eyeing her from his peripheral. A gentle smile adorned his features as she noticed his three whisker marks on his cheek. Naruto? What are you doing here? I thought you were swarmed with important meetings today? Naruto ran his hand through his hair as he laughed, I am. But, I was getting tired of it and decided I need to see my wife instead, I created some clones and dashed. Conan saw him smile genuinely at her as he turned in her direction, shock ran rampant in her mind as Naruto kneeled down and grabbed her hand affectionately, how are you feeling, beautiful? Do you hurt anywhere? She looked up and saw the concern laced in his smile, her reaction was less than what he expected as she quickly removed her hand from his, he frowned slightly as her stare left him questioning, um, Conan, are you alright? She continued to stare him down in confusion as she reeled in all of the information that was laid before her. This man was definitely an older version of the Jinchuriki she was supposed to help capture, although more handsome than his teenage version, he had an air of maturity in his presence, but also had a simple childish nature about him, it was interesting, but she felt for a moment that she could confide in him, while lost in thought, Conan didn't realize it as quickly as it came, but Naruto wrapped his arms around her in a warm hug. Conan paled as she felt the man hug her, she hadn't received a hug from anyone in years and she definitely didn't expect one from the Jinchuriki, her arms shook a little as she slowly placed her arms on his back, she gave him a few gentle pats trying to just let whatever was going on, happen. Naruto must have noticed something strange because he pulled away from her with a frown. Naruto, I need to tell you something, Sakura brought up as she looked at the now confused man in the room, because of the accident that she had, there have been complications, well, she has amnesia. Naruto frowned further as he heard this new turn of events, H how much does she remember? Sakura returned his saddened reaction, she only remembers up until the invasion, when pain attacked the village, she, doesn't remember anything about you or, even your daughter. Naruto could only gaze at the ground aimlessly as he took in the information, it was strange, Conan was in a coma for three days because of her accident and now she doesn't remember anything about him or their daughter, he only sighed as he looked over to her and saw her uncertain expression at his thinking. I guess this relates to what Hainan was saying to me when I saw her in the hall, Naruto chuckled despondently, is there any hope of her memories coming back? I don't know Naruto, her brain scans came back clean, so it's possible that it's only temporary and will return in a few hours, Naruto smiled as he heard this information but Sakura didn't keep him hanging long. But, it's also possible that it can take days or weeks to return or, maybe even not at all. Naruto turned gloomy from this information, it was strange looking at her and seeing her look at him with such an indifferent look, an entirely different persona from three days ago, he smiled a toothy grin and looked at Conan, I don't think it will never return, even if it doesn't come back, I guess it'll just have to romance her again, 
He winked at Conan who was only confused at what was happening around her. The longer everything was going, the more real her situation felt. Conan was listening to the entire conversation and when she heard them talk, everything slowly began to set in. She had so many questions and yet, she couldn't bring them forth, what could she say? She was apparently in the future and was in a future that she never fathomed would be plausible. Married to Naruto? Akatsuki are gone? She lives in Konoha now? It just felt like a lot of information to take in. Naruto? Conan responded while looking at him pensively and fidgeting with the blanket underneath her, is the war, really over? Naruto's smile widened as he responded, yep. The entire shinobi world came together and saved the world. Naruto solemnly looked to the blanket as memories were refreshed in his mind, you were there too, you helped us save the world and we couldn't have done it without you. She was there? Conan couldn't help but feel strange about these revelations, there was only one thing running rampant in her mind after all of this, where is Nagato? Naruto stiffened at her question and looked away from her to the window outside, it was a hard thing to tell her, after so many years, Naruto didn't know how she would react after being told that he died, he remembered her crying every other night about him the first couple of weeks they were together after the war, but those outbursts became more sparing as the months drove by, she eventually moved on from his death, but not without honoring his memory in some way. I, see, Conan replied quietly, it did make sense that Nagato would be dead during this time, he was an enemy and he had to be killed by them, it made her grip tightly on the blanket to stifle the tears that were trying to come forth. Hey Sakura, can you leave us alone for a little while? I need to talk to her, was all that Naruto said as he looked over to his teammate, she nodded her head silently, understanding exactly why he was doing this and they needed their privacy, maybe Conan would begin to remember? After Sakura walked out, Naruto looked at Conan with conviction, it was strange to her, that look he was throwing her way, she felt small underneath his gaze but she couldn't break the eye contact either, what did he want? Was he going to tell her something important? Was he trying to earn her trust? Or was he still trying to butter her up with a genjutsu? The last question didn't seem possible anymore because the longer she watched the things around her, everything was normal, it felt normal. Conan, I know what you're thinking, he said softly as his gaze lightened upon her, Nagato didn't die a villain. Conan's expression changed to shock at Naruto's revelation. Actually, Naruto said, to a degree, he actually died a hero. Now that statement surprised her, a hero? What do you mean? He attacked your village and destroyed it, wouldn't that create plenty of reason for him to be hated? Naruto chuckled softly at Conan's reaction, it was expected, true, but he did revive the people he killed afterward, sacrificing his life for others, in the end, he paid his dues. Don't tell me he used yes. He used that jutsu, he responded sadly, it cost him his life for the survival of others, he entrusted me with the will of finding peace before he died, I learned so much from him that day and. Naruto blushed as he looked over to her, and that was when I met you. Conan thought momentarily before speaking again, a thought from something earlier resurfaced, Sakura told me that you were my husband, is that true? Naruto laughed genuinely as he looked down to his pants and scratched the back of his head, yeah, that's true, crazy isn't it? How did we, you know? Conan asked blushing slightly at her current situation, to her, this was all news, so she was curious to their relationship together. Fall in love? Naruto answered with a blush that matched Conan's. Conan was discharged from the hospital later that day, Naruto had decided to take her to their home since there was no use in having Conan sit in the hospital anymore, after her discharge, Conan took steps out of the building and into the streets, walking side by side with Naruto was strange, firstly. He wore his Hokage coat that blew freely in the wind as he took every step, she didn't know, but it seemed like he was trying to make the best of their situation. Conan was told earlier to act as naturally as possible while walking out of the hospital. She didn't know what counted as natural, so she just walked side by side with him and tried to put on a smile, but that was far more difficult than it seemed, while walking together, she couldn't help but notice the nice stares that the villagers were giving Naruto, they were greeting him with smiles and coming up to him and asking questions while they walked. Naruto always seemed to smile and gave them help when they needed it via shadow clone. He always seemed to be willing to help people and the way he was treated was far more different than what information she was given about the boy, while walking next to her, Naruto leaned over and whispered in her ear, hey, it's okay, just wait until we get home and you can relax for a while. Hearing that made her feel somewhat better although, her being stuck in the future was still jarring, she never once believed stuff like this would happen, she had to talk to Naruto and actually figure out, just how their lives ended up this way there was no other way to do this. Even while the both of them walked, she herself noticed that she was receiving gentle smiles and stares from the villagers as well, people in the streets held no malice at all towards her, this irked her and only further proved that things around her were real. After walking a good ways away, they finally arrived at a decently sized home with a garden that was in the front yard, 
Flowers of various species littered the yard and there were also rose bushes that lined the fence. Conan's mind swirled around the thought of the garden that she was walking through. I wanted to have a garden of my own when things passed. It looks like I actually did get my wish. Naruto saw her look at the flowers amazed and he couldn't help but chuckle at her, aren't they pretty? We planted them together when you told me that you wanted them, I like flowers too, so I prepared it for us and we began working outside together, that was fun. She only looked at the back of his head in thought as he took his keys out and unlocked the front door, walking inside, she noticed it was cooler than it was outside, she was already sweating outside and it had been only 15 minutes since they walked out of the hospital. Hey Conan, you can take a shower if you want, I am going to cook us some dinner in the meantime. I am sure that you aren't feeling entirely well, so I only want you to relax for a while, I can handle things around here, Naruto said while walking into the kitchen, he had already taken off his coat and was opening pantries looking for ingredients. Conan only stood at the doorway to the kitchen as she was processing everything, she looked around the house and it felt homely, she liked it, but it felt foreign to her. After Conan didn't say anything, he looked over to her and saw her uncertain face looking nowhere in particular. He took a cup from the shelf and poured some water into it before walking over to her and reaching his hand out, here you go, you must be thirsty after being in there for so long without anything to drink, he handed the glass to her and she took it in nervousness before drinking it, her taste buds woke up immediately as she drank the water and downed the entire glass in a matter of seconds. Naruto only laughed as she handed the glass back to him and he filled it up again, catching her lost stare, he had to do something about it, hey, let's go sit in the living room then, I think dinner can wait. Conan nodded her head silently as she let Naruto walk past her into the room across the hall. There was a couch that sat against a window and a recliner that was adjacent to it. Naruto sat on the couch as Conan joined him, but sat on the other end, leaving a good amount of space between them. Conan drank more of her water before sitting it down on a coffee table in front of them. Her eyes seemed to be fixated on the water in the glass. So, Naruto said idly as he gazed upon her, I guess you have a lot of questions for me, huh? I have many, Conan responded softly as she turned her eyes to him. First, I want to know what happened with the invasion, why did it fail? Naruto thought momentarily, this was a surprisingly difficult question to answer, he didn't know all of the details, he only knew the basics of what happened, well, I wasn't around when Nagato started attacking everyone, I was off training with the toads, I only arrived after he created a crater of my village. Conan thought momentarily as he said that, so, Nagato used that much power on Naruto's village, he must have been desperate to a degree. I wouldn't worry about it for now, Conan that stuff has already passed. Naruto said with a fling of his wrist, anyway, he did a lot of damage but there were survivors, I came in late to the scene having just prepared for battle and saw my village as nothing more than a hole, I was furious, Naruto said as he looked down, I was hurt, I felt that there was no reason for all of this to be happening, but yet it did, I never knew this type of thing could happen, but I prepared for the worst anyway. Conan stared at his reactions and could relate to some extent. Nagato, when he was controlling Yahiko's path, told me many things about his ideas and what he believed, we fought, Naruto looked into Conan's eyes, then, after seeing a friend of mine become severely wounded by Nagato, I went crazy, I unleashed six tails at first, but went to eight tails a little afterwards, in the end, I met my father in my mind and he resealed my seal for me. Your father? Conan questioned, but, I don't understand, your father passed away many years ago, we never had any records of who he was nor do I remember anything other than you being an orphan. Well, Naruto started quietly, but with a small smile, when my father passed away, he sealed an image of his chakra into me should I ever need it if I go berserk, just for the record, my father was the fourth Hokage. Conan remembered the stories of that man, how could she not hear them? People used to talk about him all the time when she was younger, those stories were basically ingrained in her mind at this point, I guess it's fitting, Conan replied in thought. He'll tell you more about him later, but there's more, Naruto said as he cleared his throat, in the end. I found Nagato in your paper tree, I walked inside and talked to him, after some things were said between us, he came to a conclusion that I wasn't wrong, I helped him see what he couldn't see. Conan's shock set in, I, how did you do it? I've tried several times to help him move on, but it couldn't be done, he was set in his ways, so, how? To be honest, I don't know, Naruto replied with his hand to his chin, I guess we had more in common than we originally thought before. Conan couldn't believe how easily Nagato was changed just by a mere boy. Her thoughts rolled back to the thought that this boy is now her husband, this only left further questions, this is where you met me, right? Naruto chuckled lightly, ahem, that's correct, to be honest, when I first met you, I didn't know much about you and thought you were cold, but, his eyes went to hers as his hand went to her shoulder, the longer I knew you, the more I realized how wonderful you actually were, you slowly opened up to me over time and then, I saw the real beauty that you had within, it wasn't easy though. Conan was intrigued, how on earth would she start a relationship with the boy they were trying to capture? 
I must have been desperate, there's no way that this would ever work, we aren't even the same age. Her voice rose at the end causing Naruto to squint a tad. Hey, Conan, Naruto spoke softly as he scooted over to her, you weren't desperate, we've already been over this, this isn't the first time you've said this to me, don't worry. Conan's eyes watered as she looked to the floor, why was everything happening like this? Why did it all feel so wrong? This life that she was living went way beyond normal, what was her older self thinking? Where was any of this considered normal? She was an enemy, she was older, plus, let's not forget that her entire life was spent on helping Nagato and his plans, there was no one for her, she was alone and she was used to it. Conan, it's alright, Naruto said as he went to her and tried to give her a hug, he was thwarted in his plans as she pushed him away. I am sorry, Naruto, but, this is still new to me, she replied while looking away from him with her hand up to her forehead, I need time to figure things out, please understand. Naruto smiled softly at her as he got up from his spot, I understand, I think we're done talking now, you should just take a shower, it'll be making dinner for us, Hanan will be home in an hour or so from classes, but don't worry, I will deal with her for now. Conan thought quietly, you mean our daughter? The one that I saw earlier? That's the one, Naruto laughed as he walked into the kitchen. After thinking momentarily, Conan decided to follow Naruto's words and walk to the bathroom. Oh, Conan, Naruto said quickly, making her turn her head to face him, our room is at the end of the hall to the left, you'll find your clothes in the closet, the bathroom is to the right. Thank you, she turned back to walk back to the bedroom her husband mentioned. She opened the door and stepped within, a king-size bed was positioned to her right against the middle of the wall with a nightstand on each end, her hands reached over to a dresser with a mirror and she caressed the dresser top before placing a hand against her reflection, she saw the bags under her eyes from exhaustion and noticed her features looked older but still virtually the same. She immediately noticed her hair that fell past her shoulder blades and she took a lock and twirled it around her finger, no matter how much she thought this could be a lie, those thoughts immediately fell apart the moment they were brought up in her mind. She could only sigh as she touched the patch that was over the bump on her forehead, minor pain erupted on her face and she winced. Thoughts rushed to her head about the head injury and its role in the problem that she was currently facing, it made sense that she could have amnesia over everything that has transpired today, but her thoughts still lingered because things just seemed too surreal. Breathing softly to regain her composure, she opened her eyes. She noticed a couple of picture frames laced around the dresser, the first one she laid eyes upon was a picture of Kakashi, Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke as a group, they seemed genuinely happy and newly appointed within this picture. Another picture she noticed was one of Jiraiya and Naruto together in a silly pose, her heart clenched at the image of her mentor, but it made her smile a little before she averted her eyes to the last picture. There was a hitch in her breath, if nothing that was said hit home yet, then this was something that surely did. It was a picture from a few years ago, a family portrait with her, Naruto, and Hanan who was only a baby, she noticed the gentle happiness that radiated on everyone's faces, Conan's lip quivered gently, her eyes could never rip away from the image that now burned within her sight. Her hand wound around the frame as she saw her expression that showed a smile she had never seen herself wear before. Her mind raced as she fought to make sense of the picture, of what it meant, trying to discern if it was not but an illusion, but nothing changed, her face still smiled back at her almost as if she was mocking her, she closed her eyes to staunch the tears as she threw the frame towards to the bed in frustration. Damn it, her hands rushed to her eyes to wipe her wet irritation away, this reality was far harsher than she realized. That smile. She opened her drawer and pulled out some underwear that she assumed was hers and also walked into the closet and found some clothes, she had way more of a variety than she thought she would, her eyes scanned the rows of clothes that ranged from simple shirts to rather lavish dresses, trying not to let loose with her emotions, she pulled something out that she thought seemed okay for house wear and walked across the hall to the bathroom and closed the door rather forcefully. BP. Hearing the slam of the bathroom door, Naruto eyed the hall quietly. Even though he didn't show it, he had concern for his wife. He was trying to keep an upbeat attitude about the situation but ultimately, his internal struggle was causing conflict, there were so many problems now, he couldn't touch his wife because she had amnesia and knew nothing about him, Sakura said that she could regain her memories again, but there was no guarantee because the situation was strange, Naruto only sighed as he busily flipped the meat and vegetables in the pan. He was hoping her memories would come back and they could laugh again, their times that they shared together meant a lot to the both of them, he knew Conan's struggles growing up and she knew his. They coped with each other and gave the other the comfort that was well deserved. Their daughter only brought them closer as a family when she was born. Brushing those thoughts away in frustration, Naruto continued to focus on their dinner. BP, Conan finished brushing her hair with a brush that she assumed was her own brush. That shower felt great to her and it took some of the stress that she was feeling away. It had been a long time, at least from her current state of mind, that she had taken such a nice shower. It helped her thoughts ease away, if only temporarily. 
There were so many thoughts that were still lingering, but for now, she decided to leave them to rest. She walked outside of the bathroom and heard the sounds of giggling echoing from down the hall. Curious as she was, she tiptoed down the hallway. The giggles got louder until a scream exploded in the house. Conan saw a girl run around the corner and hide behind her with disheveled hair and a red face. Protect me from daddy, mommy. Conan looked at the girl confused before she looked up to Naruto and his silly expression as he came around the corner, his eyes darkened as he looked at the little girl. Come here, Hanan, the tickle monster hasn't finished. Naruto looked at Conan and stopped what he was doing, he rubbed the back of his head, ah, looks like you found my weakness, I give up. Conan looked at the younger girl that was holding onto her, the girl's tongue poked out at the dad and he only sighed. Conan's gaze never left her daughter, she didn't know what it was, but a sudden impulse caught her and she couldn't help herself. H. Hanan, hum, what is it mommy? The little girl asked looking up at her curiously. Conan's eyes started to water again as she stood there, this little girl, she was her daughter, she was someone that came from her, the little girl was cute and she seemed so full of life, she couldn't help but see her own self within her, her past self. Reality came crashing down all over again, this was her new life. This was who she was now, she was no longer the Conan of old that helped maintain Akatsuki, she was now the wife of the current 7th Hokage and a mother. Her hand shakily went to the top of the little girl's head and she rubbed it softly with her hand going through her hair. Naruto watched them silently, he didn't want to interrupt the moment that Conan was having with her daughter, it was then, he saw his wife kneel down and hug their daughter, her tears started rolling down her cheeks and she only sobbed. Mommy, W what's wrong? Conan only cried harder when she said that, Naruto looked at her somberly and could only think of how Conan used to be before they met, it hurt him when he thought about how much Conan was in pain from her past, he knew that this may be a lot for his wife, but he couldn't do anything about it except hope that her memories return soon. After a few minutes, Conan stood up and wiped her eyes, she walked over to the table and sat down, Naruto only watched her in concern, knowing full well that she was experiencing overwhelming emotions right now, he didn't say anything, he only smiled slightly and sat beside her. Hanan followed quietly and sat down at the dinner table, she didn't want to make her mom any more sad than she already was. Not many words were spoken when they ate, the sounds of utensils hitting bowls and plates filled the atmosphere and eating felt like an eternity, but the strange mood lingered. Naruto would glance up to his wife and see her staring at her plate mindlessly, she would eat some and then chew as if she were lost in thought. Hanan would just eat without a care in the world, she didn't really mind any of what was going on at the moment, Naruto was worried though, Conan hadn't said much the entire time they had been sitting at the table, he decided that he needed to break the ice. So, uh, how is your head feeling? Conan lifted her head to match his eyes, it is still sore, but it does feel better compared to this morning. That's good. Naruto didn't have anything else to say to her because she didn't really know anything that was happening these days. Hanan, how was class today? Naruto brought up to try and change the mood. It was okay, we learned some history of Konoha today, she said between bites while kicking her feet absentmindedly, I don't know why the other kids think it's so boring. Naruto chuckled at his daughter, well, when I was in school, I used to think it was boring, you must have gotten your mother's jeans. But daddy, mommy's jeans are too big for me, I can't wear them. A soft chuckle emanated from beside Naruto, he looked over and saw his wife smiling at their confused daughter, seeing her smile only made his grin appear again as they started to eat again, the daughter only puffed her cheeks out. Hey, don't laugh at me, it's mean, well, maybe if you weren't so cute, we wouldn't laugh at you Hanan, Naruto said with a grin. I am not cute, Hanan retorted with a huff, I am a strong girl, you know. I can't argue with that, Naruto responded with a small laugh as he dug into a piece of meat. The table remained quiet for only a moment longer before someone spoke up. Hanan? Yes, mommy? Naruto stopped eating and looked over to his wife with shock, he honestly didn't expect her to start any conversation, let alone talk to their daughter, he was intrigued to say the least. Do you have any friends in school? I have a couple of friends, but they sit far away from me, Hanan answered while stuffing her face with another mouthful, most girls don't like me though because daddy is the Hokage. Naruto leaned over to his wife in a whisper, hey, they are only jealous of Hanan, since she's my daughter, they think Hanan is treated differently. I am treated differently, Hanan shouted, daddy's helper ninja always watch over me, it's annoying. But, I can't help that sweetheart, Naruto said trying to calm his little girl, they want to follow protocol since you are the Hokage's daughter after all. I don't like it, Hanan retorted harshly, while digging into her meal aggressively. Conan only laughed more at the little girl, even though she was still relatively new to all of this, just being in the atmosphere really eased the tension at the table, she looked over to Naruto who seemed to be smiling more after their conversation, 
her thoughts went on to think about him as she continued to eat. BP, everyone finished eating. Conan brought her plate to the sink to wash it, but Naruto interrupted her, Hey, Conan, let me do the dishes, I can take care of this, you just prepare yourself for bed. It's okay, Naruto, Conan replied softly, I can at least do this much, my head doesn't hurt or anything enough to where I can't even do simple dishes. Naruto opened his mouth, hesitated, and sighed in defeat, Yeah, I guess you're right, if that's the case, then I will just put Hainan to bed now. Conan agreed and silently started washing the dishes while Naruto left the kitchen. Doing the dishes gave Conan some quiet time to herself, it also gave her something to do to occupy her mind so she wouldn't think too much. After she finished the dishes, she wiped down the counters and placed the rag back at the kitchen sink, she breathed a sigh of completion and walked down the hallway, she stopped when she heard Naruto's voice from the crack in the door. Acted the man by building a shelter, this person became best friends with him. Conan noticed the story was a story that she used to hear when she was younger. It was a story that her mother and father used to tell her, she felt a tugging at her heart as she watched Naruto tell the story in such detail, she could only see the back of his head, but that was enough to know that he was having fun in his mental journey, she could see Hainan laying down and seemed to be getting drowsy from the story, for a moment, her daughter and her made eye contact and Hainan waved a little with her hand. Conan smiled a little as she moved past the door and into their room where she began to change into her night clothes. After brushing her teeth, she went to lay down when she spotted the frame that she threw on the bed earlier that day. She picked up the photo and looked at it once more, the image of her smiling genuinely with her newborn daughter brought her into thought, her fingertips brushed against the surface, seeing Naruto's hand around her waist made her have a strange feeling of disconnect. Trying not to dive any further into the picture, she went to the dresser and brought the frame back in a near identical resting position, after that, she sighed, today was just a long day and honestly, she was hoping that the next day would prove to be easier, she walked over to what she assumed was her side of the bed and pulled the covers over herself. After laying for another ten minutes in silent thought, she was shaken out of her tired musings at the sound of the door opening, she looked over and saw Naruto as he walked into the room, changing into his clothes, she noticed his bandaged arm and how he didn't bother removing them, curiosity got the better of her. What is wrong with your arm? Naruto turned to face her while mid-shirt change, it's an old injury, I lost my arm in a fight against Sasuke at the fourth war, this hand was made with the first Hokage's cells. She was astounded by this revelation. Just what type of things were being done with first Hokage's cells now? Her mind wandered, so, I heard you telling a story to Hainan as I walked by. Naruto smiled, yeah, Hainan really loves when we tell her stories, she usually falls asleep after the first 15 minutes. I noticed, Conan responded unusually quietly, that the story you were telling was one that my parents would tell me when I was younger, did you learn it from me? Naruto only looked at her with a small smile, well, yeah. You basically forced me to learn the story so I could tell it to our kids, I remember, he said while putting on his sleeping shorts, you told me that it was a story that had a lot of meaning to you, so I did my very best to never forget it. Conan gazed down at the bed, yes, it does, after a few more moments, Naruto walked over to the bed, but surprising Conan by only grabbing a pillow, she sat up cuckily as Naruto walked to the door. Where are you going? I am going to sleep in the guest room, since you have amnesia and don't know who I am, it would be rude of me to take advantage of this situation. He looked to Conan who was only looking at the blankets after he said that, he smiled softly, well, good night, I'll see you in the morning. Wait, Naruto looked confused as he turned to her. I, I think it's okay if you sleep in here, with me. What? Naruto asked with widened eyes, are you sure? Conan blushed slightly as she looked in his eyes, maybe the close contact will help me remember something? And even if this is something like this where I can't remember, I don't think I should leave my husband to another room only because I have amnesia. Naruto looked unsure about what she just said and thought momentarily, Conan was somewhat curious of doing this, but it was for the sake of her memory recovery. After Naruto thought momentarily, he answered, well, it couldn't hurt, just let me know if it gets awkward to you, I don't want to scare you, you've been through a lot today. Conan breathed a sigh, yes, I know, I will be okay, I just, think I need someone right now, I don't want to be alone tonight. Naruto frowned at her statement and walked over to the bed with his pillow. Conan watched him extensively as he laid himself in bed and turned off the light. The light outside of their window reflected inside the room in a bluish glow, she watched as Naruto looked in her direction and she could only lock eyes with him, with each of them laying on their side. Conan felt it a good time to talk, say, Naruto? Hmm? Are we a happy couple? Naruto stared back at her before he smiled, yes? She looked down to the bed sheet, her eyes weren't betraying any emotion she was feeling. Do you? Love me? Naruto gazed into her eyes as she locked eyesight with him again, the dim light reflected against his hair and his cheek, 
his eyes radiated that light and expanded it into infinity, she was amazed, looking at him in this light and seeing him as her husband gave her strange feelings, he noticed her curious stare and only smiled as he uttered softly, I love you more than you will ever know, hearing those words gave her butterflies. It was strange, she hadn't felt that way since Yahiko, but there was something about this guy that intrigued her, the more she talked to him, even when it was about nothing in particular, the more real it felt, his words seemed genuine and she couldn't help but slowly fall into his rhythm, it wasn't until then when she felt his hand press against her face that she felt herself stiffen, she looked at him in question only to be returned with a frown, she saw sadness envelope him. You're crying, when did she ever start? She couldn't tell, her eyes only closed as she felt his thumb wipe away her tears, this vulnerability, she was so weak, but she let him touch her, she let him in even without realizing, but she was okay with that, there was a man here that seemed to care about her, he was her husband and she was his wife, if anything, she should confide in him, if not for the sake of the returning the memories, but for the sake of her sanity. Naruto quickly wrapped his arms around her, pushing her head to his chest, air escaped her lungs in astonishment, but only momentarily before she fell apart in his arms, she couldn't help herself, the night before to her was something that happened six years ago and now she was in a future that she never thought she would have, she was with a man that she never would have imagined to even be conceivable. Life to her was a quick shift and she couldn't handle the sudden change, coming from a past life that involved nothing but heartache to a future where she is loved and living in a village that she used to be an enemy with, it just became too much. Why can't I remember? I feel so lost, Conan mumbled between sobs, who am I? It's okay, Naruto said as he stroked her hair, you'll remember soon. Her words became incomprehensible as she continued to cry into his chest, this night was a night for acceptance, she was no longer in the past anymore. This life that she lived now is her life, maybe one day, and hopefully soon, her memories would return, but for now, she needed her comfort, even if it was with someone that she met for the first time today. You know, when I said that you and I were similar by being students of the same teacher, I was only joking. Conan looked at her partner aghast at his sudden change in thought, this was something she couldn't believe that she would hear from him, his tone changed and that's what scared her, Nagato, what do you mean? Naruto you'll deal with hardships and pain that is more than you've ever dealt with before, do you really believe that you can overcome this pain and hatred? The boy in question looked up to the man in the device and gave him a stern stare, it was an absolute look of determination, without so much as a hesitation, he opened his mouth, I will deal with anything and never give up, because I am Naruto, just like Jiraiya's book, you can count on me, I will not let you down. Nagato looked to Naruto and only smiled lightly as he continued his jutsu, that's good to hear, Naruto, after this jutsu, I will give my will to you, I hope that you can accomplish this task for me, I've spent most of my life in despair and hoped that there was a way to end all of this torture, blood poured from his nostril as he continued, I couldn't find the solution that I was looking for and my mind remained clouded from the hatred that I had for everything. W what do you mean? Naruto asked as he looked in worry, what are you doing? He's using a particular jutsu to bring people back from the dead at the cost of his life, Conan spoke as she stared down in remorse, she couldn't even look Naruto in the eye, there was more pain for her to deal with currently, her friend was dying and was doing it from his own will. She only stared at her best friend and saw the look of determination on his face. He's ending his life for this boy. What does Nagato see in him to make him change so easily? Naruto, Nagato wheezed, with this jutsu, it should bring everyone back that has died since the invasion. I hope that you use this as a token for forgiveness. He chuckled as he looked down, his health deteriorated with every second that passed. I know it's silly of me to ask for a favor even though I am the one that was being selfish. This piqued Naruto's curiosity as he looked at the man waiting for his response, a favor? Naruto, life will be harder from here on out, safety isn't guaranteed for anyone, but I am hoping that you'll take my request a little seriously, I want you to protect Conan for me. Conan rose in disapproval, what? Nagato, please consider what you are saying, how is that? Conan, I know exactly what I am saying, Nagato responded with blood between his lips, he will be after you once I am gone, I am sure that you won't be able to survive. I need you to stay close to Naruto, he will be of great use to us in this new future we're creating, I am sure that you can help him as well along the way. Nagato, we can't just leave AIM, Conan said in desperation, they will have no one to lead them, it could be taken over, there's too much of a risk in this situation. It's a risk we should be willing to take, it's for the sake of the entire world, Nagato replied in haste, I, I don't want to see you in the afterlife until you've lived a long life in a world that shines brighter than our never-ending rainy skies. Conan was stifled at Nagato's words and could only look away from them both as Naruto walked up to Nagato with a small smile, you have a deal, Nagato, I'll protect Conan with my life as long as I live. Nagato smiled at Naruto's words, there was a sort of calming feeling to it all, maybe he could finally feel at peace with everything now? His thoughts shifted slightly as he remembered something, actually, Conan, 
Naruto, there's something else that I will need you to do for me. BP Conan shot up out of bed in a hurry as she woke up from her dream, she brought her hand up to her forehead again as she felt a wave of pain hit her, she was also slightly dizzy from the sudden rise in motion, she rubbed her eyes and looked around to see where she was, but was confused in her location, only a moment later, her thoughts rushed back to her like a crashing ocean wave and she remembered that she was within Naruto's room, actually, it's my room too. Her thoughts spiraled on the dream that she had, it felt too familiar to be a dream, it had to be a memory, she actually remembered something, something that was a clue to her past that could unravel everything that was happening currently, she tried hard for a minute or two trying to think of what happened after her memory and what Nagato meant when he said that he had another thing he wanted from them both. It was at that moment that she turned around and realized that Naruto wasn't even in the bed, his side of the bed was made up rather neatly and only left Conan's side used, she remembered everything that happened the night before and blushed a light shade of pink from her actions towards Naruto last night, how she held onto him and clung to him as if she were going to fall, that was unbecoming of me. Standing up straight, she wiped her hair from her brow and fixed her hair by running her hands down her strands, she noticed her brush and went over to it to run the brush down her locks, she felt a few knots loosen in her hair as she continued to brush, I had short hair for so long, so things like this wouldn't happen, she sighed as she finished brushing her head, I guess I will get used to it, it wouldn't be fair to my current self if I cut my hair before she remembered. That thought left her a chuckle, she couldn't believe what she was saying, another version of herself, was she crazy? She sighed once more as she slightly shook her head, I should nt be worrying about that, I need to worry about my recovery for now. She dressed into something more casual for everyday wear from her clothes and proceeded to walk out of her bedroom, her amber eyes scanned the home as she walked through the hallway, but she didn't see anything different from yesterday. She saw her daughter's room empty as she walked by it, as she continued, she noticed that the kitchen and the living room was also empty. She was alone, she thought momentarily, Hainan must be at school, then, Naruto must be at the Hokage's office, I think I will go to see him today. She still had so many questions that were unanswered and she needed to hear it from his mouth, it was strange knowing that all of this stuff has already happened, but, if her dream was real, then that would mean she was one step closer, she needed to hear Naruto say it. After having tea and breakfast, she left the home without a second thought and walked the streets, the sun was bright and unwavering, the clouds were pillowed in the blue sky, she felt the air brush her hair against her face and she pulled her loose strands behind her ear. Beautiful she walked silently down the street towards the Hokage Tower. She looked up and noticed the sun beaming down upon her. It must have been somewhere around mid-morning, her eyes darted to the random passerbys that came close to her. They would smile and some would greet her as the Hokage's wife some would even call her Mrs. Uzumaki, that made her feel uncomfortable to a degree, she was never married and the only close person that she had was Yahiko and even then, they weren't married, they were just a couple, being married felt like it was immediately too fast, at this moment in time, she couldn't process the thought properly. Nonetheless she would wave and greet some people that passed her, some children would come up to her as well, she would pat their heads or tell them something nice to make them laugh or smile, seeing the sudden change in everyone's demeanor from the war several years ago to now was something she couldn't get used to. Nan, Conan? Thrown out of her musings, she looked up surprised at who was calling her. Hello, Sakura, Conan mumbled, looking down flustered, look, I apologize for what happened yesterday. It's okay, really, Sakura said while waving her hand dismissively with a smile, it's entirely understandable, I mean, you don't even remember anything after all. Conan frowned as she looked to Sakura again, only to turn her attention towards the person to her right, Kakashi Hitaki of the Sharingan, right? Kakashi only lightly chuckled, not of the Sharingan anymore, I lost it during the war, he pointed to his scarred eye and it was just a normal black eye, like his other one, it is a little saddening that I don't have it anymore, I was just beginning to truly understand it too. Conan only looked down in thought as further proof of her amnesia sank in. Conan, I wouldn't let it get you down, Kakashi said normally, you'll get your memory back before you know it, just so you know, we aren't enemies. Yes, I've figured that out by now, Conan said in a deadpan expression. See, Kakashi spoke up with a smile, she's still Conan, still the same no-nonsense type of humor. Conan and Sakura rolled their eyes in unison before Sakura chipped in, yeah, well, I think Conan was wanting to see Naruto today, is he too busy? Kakashi shrugged as he started to walk away, I wouldn't know, I am not the Hokage, so I don't keep tabs on anyone anymore, it's not my fault if he shirks his job. Sakura only sighed as she started walking towards her old sensei, Conan, if I were you I'd go see if he's in he always finds time to see you anyway, so even if he is busy, I don't think he will ignore you, he made that promise after all. What promise? Conan asked confused, you'll find out, see you. Conan watched as Sakura disappeared into the crowd with Kakashi.
BP Conan finally made it up the stairs and came to the door to the Hokage's office, she could hear something inside as she looked at the door in uncertainty, she didn't know if she should knock or if she should just walk in, her heart thumped lightly against her chest as she thought with fervor. You can go in, ma'am, Lord Hokage has granted you permission, no matter the circumstances. Conan jumped as she looked behind her and noticed the assistant at her desk smiling at her, she didn't even notice the desk behind her at all, she gulped, T thank you, I will see my husband now. The woman only smiled at her as she looked down to continue whatever work she was doing at her computer. Conan steeled her nerves as she opened the door, the light escaped the room and as her eyes adjusted, she saw her husband sitting at the desk at his computer with piles of paperwork, he had two clones at his side working on paperwork simultaneously while he worked on his PC. Look, I am saying that we all need to get together and go have some fun, it's been a while since we all went out anywhere, it's not like anything bad is happening around our countries anyway, we are living in an era of peace now. Naruto, you must understand that we all have busy lives outside of protecting our villages and lands, another voice spoke from the computer. Besides, don't you have an ill wife that you need to attend to? Shouldn't you be worrying about her instead? A second voice spoke from the monitor, how would she feel, knowing that you wanted to have fun and ignore your job as the Hokage, instead of doing your obligatory work like the rest of us? Naruto sighed in defeat, yeah, I guess you're right, I was just wanting us to have a good time together and just unwind a bit, it's not like we would be ignoring our work, we would just take a small break, I was going to bring her with me anyway, she's already out of the hospital. I am actually in your office right now, Conan said to her husband with a look of disinterest. Oh oh, Conan, you came by, I am sorry guys, I am going to have to talk to you later, I hope you all have a good day, Dad Bayo. Naruto, you're in trouble, a voice snickered through his computer, don't hurt him too bad, Conan. Naruto quickly ended the call, as he saw his wife walk closer to the desk, so, uh, what's up? I woke up and didn't see you or anyone for that matter in the house, Conan said somewhat harshly, you left me alone in the house when I didn't even know where I am, that was pretty irresponsible for Hokage to do, you know. Naruto clapped his hands together, I am sorry, Conan, I totally forgot to let you know where I was going to be, I just had business to take care of, please understand, from here on out, I won't leave without telling you where I am going, at least until you get your memory back. Conan leered at him a little longer before sighing, I guess, it's okay this once, I don't know how your Conan would react to this, so I should NT do more than what I've done now. She usually does what you did just now, Naruto said while rubbing the back of his head, well, it's part of what I love about you anyway. Conan blushed somewhat from the sudden compliment, she didn't know how to respond to that, w well, anyway, who were the people you were talking to on your computer? Oh yeah, that's right, Naruto snapped his fingers, I forgot that you forgot, yeah. They're the other cage from the other villages, we all talk to each other and have a discussion every morning, during the fourth war, all of our villages came together to fight the enemy, after the war, we made up and now we're all good friends. Conan was speechless, what Nagato wanted actually happened, you actually did it Naruto, that's, that's amazing, Nagato was right passing the will to you. That caused Naruto to stand up from his seat with a glimmer of hope, Conan? You remember now? Well, Conan started. I had a dream about it last night and I assumed that it was a memory, it was actually true. Well yeah, Naruto replied, Nagato sacrificed himself to revive all of the people he killed from the invasion of the Leaf Village, he also made me promise. That you'll protect me, Conan finished, her eyes widened and so did Naruto's before he came over to her and gave her a big hug. Yes, you're right, Conan this is amazing, your memory is coming back piece by piece, he swung her around before putting her back to her feet, his smile was wide and foxy she couldn't help but smile softly as well from the sudden revelation. Naruto, Conan continued, there was still something else that he wanted you to do, when I woke up from my dream, I didn't finish the second thing that he wanted you to do. Naruto scratched his head in minor thought before a light bulb appeared, oh yeah, Nagato made us promise to destroy his eyes, he said that they were too valuable to be saved, I didn't want them because I thought they wouldn't fit me, so he asked us to destroy them instead, who would have known that those eyes would have saved us so much trouble in the end, Madara was not happy at all once he realized that his eyes were missing and had never get them back. You mean, the man in the mask? Conan asked curiously. Him? No, that was Obito, Kakashi's childhood friend that was behind the mask, he just wanted people to believe he was Madara, or at least be an homage to the real Madara, that way, no one would know who he was and therefore have the upper hand in reviving the real Madara to begin with. This news came shocking to her, she never knew who was behind the mask, but she did know that he knew many things that he should NT have known and was most of the reason why this new war happened, so, the real Madara was revived. 
Yeah, the real Madara was revived although, he didn't survive that long, Naruto replied with a distant look in his eyes, everything happened so fast, you were a really big help to all of that. Conan couldn't help but feel a somewhat warm feeling inside of her belly form from the new piece of news, she actually had a bigger help to Naruto than she thought originally, I, never really thought that I would be as useful as you made me out to be, thank you. Naruto only laughed, hey, you don't have to thank me, if you never agreed to stay in Konoha, we probably wouldn't have made it without you, you really kicked my ass, you know? Conan eyed her husband oddly, did we fight? You wouldn't stop going on about leaving to go to back to aim, I had to keep you here, one way or another, so we settled on a fight, and I won. Conan looked down to the floor as she processed what she just heard, it did sound like something that she would do, the more she heard about all of this, the more she felt the reality that came crashing down upon her. I don't know what to say about that, she replied after a few moments of silence. There's not much to say about it, I said that I would protect you for the rest of my life and so I did and I am still to this day, Naruto replied to her with a smile. Suddenly, a loud noise erupted in the room, the two people in the room looked to the door and noticed an Anbu appeared. Naruto's mouth tightened as he received a note, once he read it, his eyes went serious, the playful nature that Naruto had vanished as if it was never there, something happened. Hey, Conan, can I ask you to go back home for a while? You still need to recuperate, I have something that I need to take care of. Conan was mildly surprised at the change of mood that suddenly appeared, it could be anything, at times of peace, there were things that she didn't know that were going on, she had no idea, maybe it was something that was still left over from the war, what is it, Naruto? Naruto turned back to his desk and sat down, Conan, right now, it's something that I can't discuss, I'd rather talk to you about it when I get home later today, could you wait until then? Conan thought momentarily, before she sighed, if he didn't want to talk about it, then she wouldn't pry. Okay, Naruto, I'll talk to you later about it. Conan, thank you, she smiled lightly as she walked out of the room, her thoughts spiraled as she kept walking down the steps, for some reason, she really wanted to know what could make Naruto change so quickly, unfortunately for her, she wouldn't like what she heard either. Naruto laid back in his chair and sighed a long sigh as he gazed aimlessly onto the ceiling, so, they finally found you, Aero Senen, you've been hiding for a while, huh? The sky was as blue as could be and not a cloud in sight, the wind brought cool air through the crowd as the sun cast its rays and heat to the warmed earth, the day felt like a wonderful day, but it was more somber than one came to realize, sobs filled the air as people gathered to what would be an unexpected, but needed gathering. Naruto watched on as Tsunade bawled her eyes out, it was rare seeing someone so strong, going down into her deepest regrets and letting everything out, he never saw her this way and it only fueled his sympathy for her, his hand made its way to her shoulder as he rubbed it softly, Tsunade turned into Naruto and held onto him, her face pressed against his black clothes as she cried. Conan looked to the casket and saw the picture that was laid above it, it was a picture of Jiraiya in a standard pose and a soft smile, her heart wrenched as she realized just what was happening in front of her. Her thoughts went back to her previous life when she was invading Konoha, in her eyes, Jiraiya hadn't died that long ago for her, it didn't make the matter any better though, because she could feel the twisting at her gut from the casket that was in front of her. Thoughts swam from her last encounter that she had with the old man, her eyes lowered in disgrace as she thought about how Jiraiya came to be this way, her hand played with the hem of her shirt, her facial features lost in thought. Naruto's hand around her waist startled her as she looked to him. Tsunade already having moved away from him, his concerned stare penetrated her soul as she saw his compassion welling from within. She knew that he knew, it didn't help that this world she was in now was starting to feel like her home. It began to eat her up inside, she didn't want to think about the past. She was a hardened ninja and it wouldn't make sense to dwell on things such as this, she breathed a sigh and looked down, her daughter was looking at the casket sadly, supposedly, Naruto had told Hainan about Jiraiya in a few of his tales about Naruto's past, Hainan looked up to Conan, who only smiled in melancholy back down to her child, she had to maintain some form of strength, it wouldn't make sense to break down here. After the service was over, people began to disperse, Naruto, Conan, and Hainan all walked together in silence as they walked the dirt path to a restaurant. Conan was lost in thought about everything that was happening, she didn't think that they would hold a service for Jiraiya so many years later, it was surprising to say the least, when Naruto came home later that night after she left his office. Flashback, after Conan had put Hainan to bed, she slowly walked out of her child's room and closed the door softly, she turned to the direction of the living room, she felt it was unusually quiet in there, considering that Naruto was supposed to be cleaning, she came to the end of the hall and saw Naruto standing and looking at one of the pictures on the wall, she could see he was staring somewhat longingly to a picture of him and Jiraiya before he spoke. You should sit down, Conan, unsure at the time to what he was talking about, walked to the loveseat and sat down, she didn't know what he could want, her mind raced as she thought about his tone, 
He was very serious in his response, normally, he was friendlier and happier, but that was easily replaced by the rough and hurting tone that he used towards her. What is this about, Naruto? Conan asked warily, she doesn't remember anything that she did wrong, she knew that it had to be what Naruto was worried about earlier that day when she was in his office, her mind replayed that scene before Naruto suddenly turned around, he looked in her eyes as he walked towards her and sat down beside her, his frown was etched on his face, it almost looked permanent had she not seen him smiling before. His hand grabbed hers and held it affectionately, she didn't know if it was for his strength or hers, maybe both. Conan, I have something that I need to tell you, she didn't know how to respond to this sudden reaction, she could see his eyes searching her, to make sure that she could handle the information, but she was starting to pale lightly as she thought this was something more serious, maybe it was about her? Maybe they found out that she's from a different time and that she doesn't belong here? Maybe they finally got the information they wanted from her and now they're going to reveal that she really was in a genjutsu and then kill her? Her mind raced as she thought all of these different answers, but Naruto's gentle grip on her hand tightened as he looked her in the eyes, her breath hitched as she waited. Conan, I know this is going to seem out of nowhere, believe me, I wasn't really expecting this to actually receive results either. Conan's thoughts raced further as she truly thought that this was a genjutsu, her heart clenched as she started to feel a slight stinging from her eyes, she knew it was too good to be true. Naruto watched Conan's reaction and could only gulp in frustration, this was something that he needed to tell her, she knew him, just as much as he did. We found Jiraiya, Conan's eyes widened as she felt all of her worries instantly vanish, everything that she was thinking about, went out of the window and now, her mind put all of the pieces together, but then, her thoughts ran through this new confirmation, she let go of her breath and looked at Naruto with widened eyes. He was, alive? Naruto's gaze cast downward as he continued to grip her hand, no, we found his body, it was laying at the bottom of the large lake in aim. Naruto sighed as he ran a hand through his hair, you told me about your fight against pervy sage and told me where he fought you guys back then, I didn't, I didn't think it was right for him to have such a watery grave, I sent a team to look for his body a couple of months ago, we finally recovered it. Conan took in the news of Jiraiya's recovery and then, her thoughts crashed down upon her again, this was partly her fault, why did she have to be so stupid and let Nagato kill their only mentor? Conan gasped as Naruto pulled her into a hug, it was almost like he was reading her mind, she wasn't expecting it so suddenly and she almost vocalized against it, but the warmth that permeated through his contact, quelled her reluctance, after a moment, her hands wrapped around him, slowly, but surely and she gripped him tightly, her body started to tremble lightly as she held onto him. Naruto only held onto her tighter as he took in her warmth, he could feel her shaking and knew that this was hitting her hard, any time that Jiraiya was ever mentioned, she would always gaze somewhere far away in the distance, she would always blame herself and never seem to get over the fact that she did that to her only father figure after she became an orphan. Naruto stroked her back as he let her absorb the information, he knew that she needed some time, it was also different since this Conan was a different Conan than he knew, this Conan had seen Jiraiya more recently than he has if he was to believe that she could only remember during the pain invasion. BP, Naruto interlaced his fingers with Conan's as they continued walking, pulling her out of her reverie, she didn't object to the feeling as she returned the gesture and held on tighter than she intended, Naruto was surprised at her strength, but said nothing as they continued to walk, it almost felt like normal again as they held hands and walked through the streets with their daughter, who was a few paces ahead of them. After a few moments, they turned into a restaurant and went through the entrance, the smell of barbecue wafted through the air and the family sat down at a table with menus placed before them. Normally, we go to eat ramen at Ichiraku's since I am never able to get out much, but since you are dealing with amnesia, I felt it was better if we ate something that was more to your taste. Conan, who was broken from her concentration on the menu, looked over to Naruto surprised, you didn't have to do that, I can manage with ramen, I really wanted us to try and continue living as we were before, I am hoping that through routine, I could come back to my senses. Sorry. Naruto said while looking down, I was just trying to help. Naruto smiled lightly as he looked at her, even though he knew that this Conan was different, she was still Conan at the end of the day, the way she answered him was very similar to her current self, her mannerisms and how she held herself was also the same, it's just that her love for him was different, his smile faltered as he thought momentarily before he shook his head and looked over the menu. The waiter came over and everyone placed their orders, once that was done, Naruto and Conan looked at each other, Conan's sight looked downwards as she contemplated something, after a few moments, Conan looked back up to him, Naruto, I am, sorry for what I did. Naruto sat there with a pensive stare, but pushed it away before he spoke, it wasn't your fault, Conan, he said to her softly, his eyes softened and he tried to smile, but it didn't entirely reach his eyes, you were just following orders, I am sure that if you had the option, you would have chosen otherwise, I know you don't like killing. Conan's eyes went downcast, her feelings began to well up inside of her. 
She was struck with Naruto's mature response to her and it hit her hard. Her eyes started to water as she breathed deeply trying to staunch the tears that were threatening to break forth from her eyes. Naruto noticed her dismay and gave her a napkin which she softly took from him and began to dab her eyes. After a few moments, she sniffed lightly and looked into her husband's eyes again, his had such a comforting look that she could lose herself in, his hand reached onto the table and she looked at it momentarily before she reached her hand out as well and held onto it, she felt his thumb rubbing against the top of her hand, there was a certain warmth to the gesture and she could only curve her lips upward lightly. Naruto smiled softly to her as he took in her form, even though his wife was experiencing some strange memory loss, she was still the same beautiful woman that he fell in love with all those years ago. Daddy, when is the food getting here? I am hungry. Naruto and Conan looked to their daughter that was sitting beside Naruto and they both laughed before he ruffled the top of her head, they have to make the food first, honey, you can't expect the food so quickly, you know what they say, patience is a virtue. Naruto and Conan smiled to each other as they continued talking to each other and their daughter, the atmosphere between them slowly fading into a peaceful one as the day started to darken and the sun began to set. BP, Conan, Conan's eyes opened as she heard a voice speak to her, her eyes were foggy and the light from the day was blinding her vision, she rubbed her eyes desperately, blinking a few more times, she opened them again and found nothing but trees around her, where am I? I don't remember trees. Her thoughts ran back to the time when she was with Naruto and Hainan. She had just enjoyed a beautiful day with the both of them, she went shopping, they went to Ichiraku's, they went to buy groceries, there wasn't anything else she could remember after that, her mind mulled over her previous day, but nothing new came up, this place looked familiar, but she couldn't remember where she had seen it before, after hesitating, she sighed, she should nt be here, wherever here was, where was her family? Where was she? Feeling fear creep up her insides, she started to look around, maybe there was an enemy that separated them, maybe they don't want us to be too close together, maybe Naruto moved me elsewhere so that I won't be in the way, then, where's Hainan? Conan, she suddenly searched with her sight and pinpointed where the voice was coming from. It came from her side as she looked to the figure that was standing next to her, as a matter of fact, there were a few figures standing next to her, her brain was trying to understand what was happening, but for the life of her, she couldn't figure it out, it didn't want to figure it out, she knew that there was something unusual about this new predicament, she stood as she held her head lightly, feeling nausea begin to take over, she walked to a tree and rested against it. There's no way this is possible, what happened? Her eyes widened as she grasped her head, a sharp stab of pain hit her forehead as she hissed in frustration, she grabbed her forehead to try and staunch the headache, and after a few moments, the waves of pain began to subside, she developed a cold sweat and rubbed her arms to try and feel that everything that was going on was real, she looked at the clothes that she was wearing and saw her robe, which was black in color. I haven't seen this robe since, her sight caught her painted fingernails as she flexed her fingers, a sturdy ring was on one of her fingers and a sinking feeling kept gnawing from within, this wasn't her wedding ring, she began to heave as she looked to the person who was watching over her curiously, his body held no emotion, but she could see something that was behind his eyes, a look of worry. Nagato, Conan called weakly, pure shock ran through her veins as she tried to put the pieces of the puzzle together. She didn't know why, she didn't know how, but she was somehow in the past, that was her first logical answer, putting everything together made her come to that conclusion, it was jarring, but she needed to have a level head, she began to think heavily, there could be no other reason she could be here, unless she was reliving her past in a coma or was in a genjutsu or something, but the more she stood on the ground and smelled the air, the more things were beginning to feel real. Why they were real? She didn't know, was a god trying to have fun with her? Was there something that she did wrong? Was this a second chance to correct some things that she did wrong? She didn't know, all she knew was that she wasn't with her beloved Naruto and her cute daughter Hainan. She began to tremble lightly at this, but she tried the hardest she had ever tried to stifle her tears, after years of being with Naruto and her daughter, her emotions were let go a long time ago and she was able to grieve and move on from things long since past, Naruto told her that she should nt bottle things up and she gave into that idea, it was commonplace for her, it still didn't help that things were different now, she's supposedly in the past. Conan, are you feeling unwell? The Tendo Pain asked curiously, Nagato didn't know why, but Conan suddenly started to get sick, this wasn't a good thing, since the invasion was starting and she was a vital piece in the plan. Conan's mind was running a mile a minute, but she tried her best to quash her feelings and try to play it off as best as she could. If this really was the past, then she would need to keep things going. So as to not change things too much, she would worry about other stuff later. Right now, she needed to make sure that things remained the same. As much as she would like to make things better, she didn't want to risk losing the only family that she has, that being Naruto and Conan in their relationship, after being with Naruto and watching the world succeed in its endeavors to end the fourth shinobi world war. 
many things needed to happen for Naruto and for the world, so that everyone could eventually live in harmony. Yes, everything is fine, Conan said as she got up from the tree, he'll go ahead and start my part of the plan. Her face was neutral after her momentary lapse that she showed, although now she was keeping up appearances, she began to walk towards the leaf village, mainly to get away from Nagato, but to also start the plan for the invasion, she knew that things needed to be started and that she was also going to work on making sure that plans start moving forward, she didn't want to lose the future that she created with Naruto. Her thoughts raced as she thought about her current situation, she was just a few minutes ago, in the future with Naruto and having a good day, they went out and had a fun time in the village and she can't remember what happened after that, her heart clenched as she thought about Hainan and Naruto and how she missed them both already, being in the past meant that she couldn't see them anymore. I can still see Naruto, she thought quietly, Naruto was younger in these days, but he was around, they were about to fight him in an hour or two, if her memory was correct, she blushed lightly as she thought about what was about to happen, if this really was the past, then she would have to reenact their relationship with each other, could she do that? She shook her head as she tried to focus, first things first, I need to get into the village, but, I don't want to kill anyone this time, I need to somehow make sure that I let Konoha know that I am on their side, after everything that I went through before, I can't bring myself to be so ruthless anymore. Naruto would look down on me if I relentlessly killed innocent people, even if I did it before, saving a few people won't make much of a difference, I think I will be okay. Conan quickly undid her Akatsuki robe as she pulled it off and threw it on the ground. Hastily revealing her blue navel revealing shirt and blue pants. As far as she was aware, that robe was a giant target on her back and she didn't want to add any fuel to that fire. Her eyes strained as she knitted her eyebrows in concentration, she knew that it wasn't going to be easy to convince them, but she had to start somewhere. Her eyes watered as she thought of her sudden interaction with Nagato, she hadn't seen him since the end of the war when he was an Edo Tensai, but now, knowing that he's still alive in this past that she was reliving, she couldn't help but get emotional, her fist clenched as she shook her head with tears eyes and pushed forward. Nagato, I am sorry, but, your death is important to the entire world, forgive me, her thoughts kept going as she infiltrated the village and began her beeline towards any of the Junin that she could find. She needed to find someone and let them know of her plans, it was going to be difficult, but if it made things easier for Naruto, then she would do it, she loved him too much to stay idle thanks for watching here.